All right, so I think the one thing we can all agree upon in this game was not enough penalties. I would have liked to see a lot more flags thrown. Uh, and really, uh, other than that, though, the officiating was perfect. There definitely wasn't uh, about a thousand horrible calls whatsoever. So tip your caps to the referees for this one. I mean, th th that was horrible. Anyways, uh, back to the topic of this video. I thought Sam Darnold looked, looked good. Again, uh, there were some negatives. We'll get into the negatives. But I thought he got a lot better as the game went on. So, like, early on, it was a lot of, like, okay, you're just taking what the Houston uh, defense is giving you, which is still fine. Like, that's a, something a quarterback does. But there was a bit of, like, okay, you're playing Houston. And I would still say that throughout the entire game. But he did make some legit good throws. I think this really goes to show, I mean, just how important it is being in a situation. And it's something that maybe even I underestimated a little bit where, you know, my critiques of Darnold with the Jets was never that he was the issue, but that there were still some issues despite the fact that he was in a horrible situation. Uh, and I would still say that those issues are kind of there, but they just don't really matter as much when you're in a good situation. So maybe that's a little scalp selling on myself. But anyways, let's get into uh, the film study. Let's talk about Darnold's performance. So first, like this one, this one was awesome. This one was just a, a really good play. And, you know, when you talk about stuff that Darnold can do above or below replacement level, which I think is a good way to view just quarterbacks in general, what is he adding that someone you sign off the street uh, doesn't add? Well, this is one of those things. It's going to be zone coverage, cover three zone. You have a receiver who's going to be, it's actually going to end up being a blown coverage towards the Panthers, right? But Darnold doesn't notice that because he's looking towards his left, which is not his fault. That's understandable. That happens to every quarterback, even Tom Brady. Look, so he looks to his left, gets to another read, and even gets to a third read before finally realizing, okay, I have to scramble outside the pocket. So this is really impressive. Largely, I think, because the offensive line wasn't, like, incredible here. They did their job. They did, they did their job well. But it's not like he had five seconds to get through his progressions. He had a little bit of time to do it, and he got through his progressions very quickly and has now noticed, oh, I have this wide-open receiver down the field. And look at him off balance. Makes a really accurate throw. It was a wide-open receiver, but it's a really impressive throw, and he got it there quickly, and that's important. You have to get it there quickly because the longer it takes to get there, the smaller the window is. That's a really good play, and that's like uh, a play that, you know, we saw sometimes in college with Darnold, which is nice to see. I also thought something like this, where this is fun, and this is something that, you know, uh, I'm a huge fan of these types of plays. I think if you've watched a lot of my content, you're aware of that. You know that I like seeing quarterbacks run with the football. It's it's a huge benefit because especially when you have Christian McCaffrey, which, you know, uh, hopefully that's not as bad as it, it might be. Uh, but what's going to happen is that it's going to be a play action with McCaffrey, or not a play action. It's going to be sort of a fake handoff with McCaffrey. Darnold takes it himself, runs to the offense's right. You also have a tight end who's going to roll over and lead block for, uh, you know, there's another guy in the area. So tight end will block that guy. So the main person to watch is going to be the Houston defender who I've circled in black because watch what he does. As you see, he's going to roll, you know, go very close to the middle of the field. He suspects that he's going to get hit by the tight end right here. But of course, that's not happening and he does not have to get over to McCaffrey. He has to get to Sam Darnold. And to his credit, he reads this pretty quickly. But Darnold's just too fast and he's able to outrun him and get into the end zone for a touchdown. I think that Darnold's athleticism is a real underrated aspect of his game and that stuff is very good and can come in handy really against any team. You know, people will say, eh, it's the Texans. Well, that kind of thing works against the Texans. It works against the Saints. It works against, you know, what, the Rams, whatever team you want to say, it will work. Now, I do have to say a lot of his good plays came from stuff like this where it's going to be zone coverage, it's a play action, you're going to have a section over the middle of the field that is going to be open, especially with this Houston Texans defense where they play zone just every play, that's sort of the Lovey Smith thing, is you can do this stuff a lot and you can get guys wide open. Watch, so you're going to run to play action, uh, Darnold, he's going to make this throw, uh, I mean, this is... I could make this throw. And I, I don't say that jokingly. I could literally make this throw. Everyone could. It's a very easy throw to make. Uh, so it's weird because it kind of feels like I'm taking away from Sam Darnold. And I am. I mean, that's what I'm doing. Is There's definitely a benefit in him playing on an offense that can get guys open like this. This was a lot of his yards. It, it just was. I mean, you and I watched the same game. We know there were wide open receivers. Now, you got to give him credit for locating the wide receivers. But on a play like this... I mean, this is his first read. This is just things working out well for him. Uh, again, he didn't magically become a different quarterback when he went with the Carolina Panthers. There's just finally now 
guys who are actually open. But still, I mean, you know, again, he does hit the player. Like, I shouldn't criticize, I'm not criticizing him. Like, he made the play, uh, got the DJ Moore. Like, that's still good. My only point, I guess, with that is just more so of, I feel like there was a bit on Twitter of, oh my God, he looks way better when he's away from the Jets. And that's true, but it says more about the Jets than it does about Darnold himself. Although I also want to be clear, yeah, that stuff did happen, especially early on. But there was other, like, legit just, like, good throws as well. And, you know, him running an offense-type uh, plays that are impressive and stuff that I like to see from him. So this is going to be a, a zone coverage play. It looks like it's cover six right here. And you see the route that Darnold wants to throw to. This route definitely could get open, but, you know, uh, we'll see if it gets into a gap in coverage. Watch, Darnold takes the snap, and you are going to notice that, okay, so there is this, you know, area where Darnold could maybe throw it, but it's pretty good coverage. That Houston player is doing a good job of reading this play, but Darnold is just going to time this one perfectly. Watch, that's a dangerous throw, actually, but it's really accurate, and he makes it work. So stuff like that is definitely promising to see. That's a high degree of difficulty throw. So while there wasn't a ton of those I don't think when there were those he was able to do a pretty good job like also something like this was just a really impressive play it's going to be a third down and nine uh you have a, a it's a a blitz play right here it's not cover zero but it is a blitz and it's man coverage you see the route that Terrence Marshall is running and with how far off the corner that's covering him is playing it makes sense for Donald to look in that direction the uh issue is just that the blitz is going to come very quickly again not a great night for the offensive line, for sure. But watch how Darnold was able to hang in there just long enough. Takes the hit, but makes the throw and picks up the first down. Hey, sometimes you got to take the hit in football to make the play work. That's what Darnold did and give him credit because that was just a perfectly accurate throw. And again, that's not a very easy play to make. And there also were some legitimate just not good plays. Um, like on this one, what's going to happen is that it's going to be a... It's This isn't horrible. This is just a, a little small thing that, uh, you know, you would like to see him clean up a little bit, right? This is, you could call it a nitpick if you want. I wouldn't. I think this is a legitimate uh, bad decision that could have been worse, but it's also barely a bad decision, kind of. So anyways, what's going to happen is it's quarters coverage, and you have a receiver who's running a route that will get into this gap in coverage. It's similar to that last play, except, you know, uh, you're not going to see the linebackers get as out of position because there's no play action on this one. However, watch how right when this play starts, at this point, it's going to get open. You can tell already. Both safeties are playing off. However, if you want to make this throw, you have to make this throw now. You cannot wait too long because the safeties can't adjust to this, come in, and make a play. Uh, and this is these are some things that were really frustrated me watching him in a Jets uniform. It's like, okay, you know, for one thing, he probably is just unused to seeing a guy get open in general because he played for the Jets for three years. So that's an aspect of this, of course. But it's also like at this point, you got to fire it now, and it's not like he's going to wait forever. But look, there's just a bit of a hesitation. I mean, it's it's really small, but he should have been in the throwing motion when I paused it right there. You kind of have to make that throw a little bit quicker. Yes, it's nitpicky, right? Because it wasn't horrible, but it was just a little bit late, and that can turn a 15-yard gain into an interception. It really can. So I know it feels like a nitpick, but it really isn't. I also should mention, there was some bad pocket presence plays, and you could decide if you want to blame the line or Darnold for it. For me, I kind of feel like I've seen Darnold have these issues for four years in the NFL now. I'm more likely to blame Darnold, but you know, the Panthers offensive line, we were kind of worried about heading into this season. Actually, had kind of had an okay couple of weeks, but you know, definitely gave up some pressures early on, so that wasn't great either. So yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, Darnold to me, it's unfortunate because kind of the comparison I make for him a little bit is he's kind of been a Teddy Bridgewater type through three weeks. So I don't know exactly uh, how much of a benefit the Panthers have had, but they certainly had a benefit uh, with Darnold. I mean, it hasn't been a mess by any means. So I do think a lot of credit has to go to the coaching staff and the receiving core. Offensive line sucked, but you can you can win games with a bad offensive line. Uh, as long as you have receivers who can get open. You can't win games if you don't have receivers who can get open, and there's a lot of evidence to support this, even though people tend to believe the contrary. But yeah, anyways, that's what I thought. Congratulations to the 3-0 Panthers. Wow, who would have thought? Uh, Panthers fans, but not a lot of other fans, I feel like. So congratulations to them. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.